Welcome to the Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Mark Clements, in-depth, relevant biblical teachings will help you in life and living in today's world. Now, let's join Pastor Clements in the service already in progress. Let's look at our Bibles together, Luke chapter 1, and we'll start with the these, uh, these verses that we've grown familiar with uh, over the past weeks and start with verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused or engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel came in and said, Hail, you who are highly favored, the Lord's with you. Blessed are you among women. And she saw him and was troubled at his greeting and questioned in her mind what manner of Reading this should be, and the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary, you found favor with God. You shall conceive in your womb, bring forth a son, call his name Jesus, he shall be great. He shall be called Son of the Highest, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And Mary asked the angel, How shall this be? I've never had relations with a man. The angel said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore, the holy thing born of you shall be called the Son of God. And behold, your cousin Elizabeth has conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary rose in those days and went to the hill country with haste to the city of Judah, and entered the house of Zechariah, and greeted Elizabeth. And it came to pass, when Elizabeth heard the salutation or greeting of Mary, the babe leaped within her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and spoke with a loud voice, and said, Blessed are you among women, blessed is the fruit of your womb. Whence come to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me. And lo, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped for joy within my womb. And blessed is she who has believed, There shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And then Mary begins what we know as the Magnificat. My soul does magnify the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, and so on and so on, uh, down through the 55th verse. Uh, We want to look tonight uh, in the limited time that that we have in this final final midweek service uh, of 2018 uh, here at Living Word Christian Church. We want to look at three of these verses. <clears throat> There's much that could be said, much that we could share, much that we could teach, much that we could proclaim and exhort you with uh, in all of these verses. But we want to just take three, uh, three, uh, pull them out, uh, and 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 expound on the on the importance of them. Not in the story. Not in the story. Uh, in your life in your life. The Bible is relevant to us. It's a relevant book. It's applicable. It's something that we can put into practice and apply to our everyday life. And on every page, there are encouragements on how to live. There are instructions on how to act. And, 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 and there's, there's commandments and there's promises uh, and there's revelation of God's plan and will and purpose. Uh, and, and no different on this page. Now, we, we, we see the angel coming in to, uh, to Mary, and, and, and of course, she wasn't expecting it. We don't have any impression whatsoever that she'd been praying for anything of the sort. We see in our Bible nothing that says we should pray for visions, pray for dreams, pray for angelic visitations, pray for any type of supernatural event whatsoever, except the most supernatural of all events, and that's the new birth. That's becoming a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's praying and speaking to God and professing your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your acceptance of him as your Savior, your your belief that God's raised him from the dead, and your confession that Jesus Christ is now my Lord. That's the most supernatural thing that will ever happen in any believer's life. Not raising a dead person, not healing a whole colony of lepers, not being translated off to some other place, not being swept up into heaven, not walking on water. None of those are more supernatural than the greatest exertion of God's power, which Ephesians chapter 1 says happens when you become a a new creature in Christ Jesus. It's the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead. 
and it raises you from the dead right into newness of life. And you become a brand new creation in the spirit, in your spirit, in the eternal part of your being. The, the trouble is with most people, they look at the external part of their being, the natural part of their being, the temporal part of their being. And, and John chapter 3 clears it up and says, your mom and dad gave you that earth suit. Your mom and dad gave you that encasement that you dwell inside of. But the part of you that's born again is your spirit. That's, that's what he said. That which is born of flesh, of natural parents, that's your flesh. But that which is born of the Holy Spirit is your spirit, is your spirit. So you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. The Greek language in which that original text uh, was penned says one that has never existed before. One that never existed before. <clears throat> and, 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 and so you're changed. Greatest miracle that ever takes place. Greatest miracle that ever happens when you're born again. <coughs> but this particular uh, at this particular time, again, she wasn't praying, she wasn't fasting, she wasn't, she wasn't standing for some type of visit, visitation or some type of appearance, uh, and she didn't go tell the whole world about it and quit her job and write a book. Start a ministry, uh, and, and because an angel appeared to her. No, uh, she just the angel told her about Elizabeth, and apparently Elizabeth hadn't told anybody either, because she didn't know it, and she was a cousin. Now today, uh, I don't think you could have an angelic visitation without all of your cousins, all of your nieces, all of your nephews, brothers and sisters, friends and enemies, and the whole world knowing about it within five minutes. It would hit social media, and you'd have to let everybody know. Uh, been six months along with Elizabeth, and nobody knew. Her cousin Mary didn't even know. And she, she immediately then went with haste and, and found her. And, and I get the impression that she just kind of hit the door. You know, didn't knock, forgot to ring the bell, just slammed right into the door and ran inside and, and said, Elizabeth, Elizabeth! And Elizabeth come around, you know, drying her hair, you know, and saying, and saying what? And, and she said, wow. She said, as soon as I heard your greeting, as soon as your greeting hit my ears, I mean, the baby started doing a dance on the inside of me. And she knew something was up, and she knew by the Spirit of God that she was carrying the Savior. Now, it says within days. How much do you start showing within days? Not at all. Now, she didn't know it by anything natural, and, and she hadn't sent her a telegram or a text. She ran, and she didn't even tell her, and Elizabeth knew it. Wonderful if we'd know more by the Holy Spirit. If we, if we just know more by the Spirit. Elizabeth, uh, uh, as we know it, wasn't even born again. Wasn't even born again. But she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God came on her and came in her, and she spoke out with a loud voice. Uh, and and, and see, see, she didn't know it till then, but she did know it. Now, all that's free. We're not going to look at any of those verses. That's just, that, 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 that's just all free. We're going to go back to the angel when he actually spoke to Mary, and first he greeted her. She questioned the greeting. He told her what was going to take place. He answered her question. He gave her news in verse 36 about Elizabeth, and then he, he capped it off in verse 37 with this powerful statement, for with God nothing shall be impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, with men, things are impossible. Jesus, Jesus said that in, in another verse. With man, this is impossible. See, and, 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 and with your best effort, some things aren't even possible. And, and with everything you know to do, some things just aren't possible. But with God, but with my God, with the Most High God, with the great God, with the awesome God, with the ever-living God, there's nothing that isn't possible. There's nothing that isn't possible. This is the God that makes the sun stand still right up in the sky because somebody said, well, that's not possible. Everything would have to... No, with God, nothing is impossible. This is the God that parts the sea because, because one of his people stand up and ask him and say the armies of Egypt are coming down the bank behind us and the Red Sea is before us. What do we do? And he says, just stretch your rod right out over the water. And the Bible says he blew with his nostrils. He sneezed once and, and, the, whole, and the whole oceans stood up. See, this is the, this is the God. It might, it might be impossible with you and it may be impossible with man, but this is the God who says, drop your axe head in there and it'll float. 
Huh? He dropped his axe head in. He said, he said, just put a stick in it and it's going to float. He's the God who makes the axe heads float. Hallelujah. Name me one human being that can do that, magician or not. He's that God who splits the oceans, makes the axe heads to float. Stale tells the sun to stand still in the sky. He makes water come out of the rock, makes manna come down out of heaven. He's, he's the God who walks on water, heals the sick in every sickness and every disease, raises the dead and tells them to go off and walk and talk. He's the one who walks through the fire with his servant, closes the lion's mouth. He's the, one, he's the one back in Isaiah chapter 37 that when Hezekiah prayed to him uh, and, said, and said, Oh, Sennacherib, oh, Sennacherib, the old, the old Syrian king is right outside the wall. And he had somebody come up, put a ladder up, climb right up on the outside of the wall and read his letter to all of my people in a megaphone and say, Your king won't surrender, so we're coming in tomorrow. We're taking over your city. We're going to be in your streets and we're killing you all. And Hezekiah went and prayed, and God said, don't, give, don't pay him any mind. He, he won't even come in your city. He won't lay one single solitary toe inside of the city limits of Jerusalem. I'll take care of this. 180,000 troops, and one angel walked through their midst in the nighttime. And when Sennacherib got up from his tent the next morning, and he stretched like this, and he reached his hand out for his servant, to, to hand him his cup of coffee. He looked, and there was no cup, and there was no coffee, and his servant was dead, and he looked in, and all of his servants were dead, and walked all the way around his whole company, and all 180,000 Syrian troops, they were all dead. They were all dead because God said, he hasn't threatened you, he's threatened me. He has, he, he's, he's not coming against you, he's coming against me. This is my battle. You just stand aside and see the salvation of our God. That's not the only time he did that either. Our God knows how to take care of his own. Now, 180,000 to one looks like poor odds. Looks like poor odds, but there are no odds when it comes to God. There's nothing impossible with God. And, and, and in Acts chapter 16, when Paul and Silas are thrown in jail, and they're in the innermost prison, and they've got all the bars uh, uh, locked around them and over them, and they've got their hands and in, 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 in their feet in stocks, uh, and they just sing praises. And they just sing praises, and they just sing to the Lord, and they pray and sing praises, and all the other prisoners heard them. What are you singing about? You're in the innermost prison. What are you singing about? You're going to be executed tomorrow. What are you singing about? Well, we're singing because with God, nothing's impossible. And everything began to shake, and the doors all flew open, and their, and, and their bonds fell right off, and, and the stocks off their feet, and, and they stood up. And, and not only did they get set free, the jailer came in, going to kill himself. And they said, oh, do yourself no harm. We're all here. And they went to his house that night. He took care of, of, of putting some first aid on him, and then they preached, and his whole family got saved. His whole family got saved. I love all the accounts in the Bible when it just looks like it's going to all go down and everything is lost and, and defeat is certain and then God shows up. And then God shows up. With men it may be impossible, but not with God. With God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Matthew, excuse me, Mark chapter 10 and verse 27 Mark 10, 27, this is Jesus speaking, not the angel, this is Jesus speaking. And he looked about them and said, with man it's impossible, but not with God. With God all things are possible. It's good sometimes just to come to the place where no man can help you. You can't help yourself and no one else can help you and you're beyond the help of any, of any human being or any human tactic or technique. It's good to just throw yourself over on the hands of God and just say, God, and nothing's impossible with you. Amen. That's a statement of faith, and it's one that Jesus made. It's one that the angel made. Nothing is impossible. Now, now, in Psalm 78, look at this verse. Psalm 78, verse 19. It'll be up here right on the screen. Psalm 78 and verse 19. Yea, now this is speaking about the Israelites. This is speaking about, you know, those people who we put on this pedestal. These are God's chosen people. They were the most complaining, grumbling, murmuring, grumpy people in the whole Bible. They did it for 40 years, and they didn't get to go into the promised land because of it. Go ahead, say to your neighbor, they, their complaining kept them out. And it said, yay, they spoke against God. Now, I don't know, I've read that. I read that for years and years and years and thought, they spoke against God? How is that statement against God? It's just a question. They spoke against God. You mean they cursed him? What do you mean they spoke against God? Did they lie about him? 
They spoke against God. Were they trying to turn others away from him? When you speak against somebody, what does that mean? No, they spoke against God, and all they did was question his ability. That's all they did. They questioned his ability. They said, can God furnish a table here in the wilderness? Moses took them out into the wilderness, and Moses said, with God, nothing is impossible. He'll feed us out here. And they all folded their arms and said, can God furnish a table out here in the wilderness? Well, who do you think you're talking about here? Aunt Jemima? Grandma Moses? Who are you talking about here? Your, your, your auntie? You, you talk, no, this is, this is just Jehovah. This is Jehovah. This won't even, this won't even, this won't even strain him. Th th this won't even be difficult for him. No, no, no. Maybe with man, maybe with the people you know, maybe with the people that you're used to Come making on. dinner. Come on. Maybe, with, maybe with the staff up there at the convention center that can only feed just so many thousand in one sitting. It don't matter how many people there are out there. When, when God makes his mind up to do something, bless God, it's as good as done. Hallelujah. There's no possible or impossible, difficult or hard or easy. No, there's just, when God takes a mind to doing something, it's going to be done. Yes. With God, nothing is impossible. He says, this little virgin girl is going to have a baby. It's going to happen. Right. And, 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 and Elizabeth, you've never had one, and you're 90 years old. It's going to happen. And old Sarah back there with Abraham, you've never had a baby, and, and, and you think it's too hard for God? You think, it's, I'll wait 20 years and see if it's then, then what you think about it. No, Sarah did the same thing back there, back there in, 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 in Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter, chapter 18 and verse 14. Uh, uh, she laughed about it. And, and, and the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? In verse 13, Genesis 18, why did Sarah laugh? Uh, uh, saying, for sure, for sure, shall I surely bear a child? I'm too old. I'm too old. And he says in verse 15, he's, he's lucky he didn't kindle her wrath like those Israelites did when they spoke against God. And no, she, is anything too hard for the Lord? You ought to underline that. You ought to have stars around that and brackets around that and highlight that and dog ear that page and go back there and look at that. Every time it gets hard for you, every time it's difficult in life, every time you think it's a challenge, you ought to just remind yourself, there's nothing too difficult for God. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything? There's nothing impossible for God. He said in 17.1, Abraham was 99 years old, and the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the Almighty God. In the Hebrew, that's I am El Shaddai. I'm the God that's more than enough. I'm more than big enough. I'm more than rich enough. I'm more than strong enough. I'm the God that's more than enough, not barely enough. Not, not we'll just squeak by, we'll barely, we'll just have enough. No, I'm the God that's more than enough. More than enough. Didn't you ever hear, read those stories about the manna would come down out of heaven. It would cover all the, all the whole desert, and they'd be out there going, okay, i got to get my little omer and a half. i got to get my omer for everyone. Hey, you leave that piece alone. That one's for me. No, no, I got it first. Oh, is there going to be enough? And, and people just fighting each other and scrapping and fist fight. You ever, hear, you ever read that? No, because there was more than enough. More than enough. And the Bible said when the sun came up, it evaporated like the dew, and it wasn't there anymore. Had to get up early. Woo-hoo, somebody would be in trouble. <laughs> and the water would come out of the rock the rock the rock one granite rock and it says they carried it around how did oh. you know it, it's coming out of the rock in the side of the mountain they decide they have to move so they take the rock out of the mountain and it keeps coming out and the Bible says they carried it around the whole time they carried around the rock and water came out of the rock Take that to your atheist friends and get an explanation. <laughs> How'd evolution figure that one out? Water coming out of a rock, enough to, enough, to, enough to hydrate 2 million people and all of their livestock. And can't you imagine at a certain time, you know, about 3.45 in the afternoon, and it started, kind of started running out, and then just, just a trickle, and then there's still 200,000 people there, and they're fighting each other, beating on each other to get that last little dribble, and then it comes down. You ever read that? No, and you never will because he's a God that's more than enough. He's not the God that's barely enough. Just enough for a little tenth of a teacup for every one of you. And then that's all today. Oh, stop. You got to quit coming. We don't have any more. No. You know, you ever see Jesus do that? No, he healed them all. There's more than enough. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth as the Holy Ghost and power who went about healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Not he didn't get to 80%, 85%, 87%, 
98%. That's it. That's all the power there is. Nobody else can be saved today. Nobody else can be born again. Nobody else can be filled with the Spirit. Nobody else can be delivered because we've used up the power of God for today. Did you ever read that? You never will because he's not the God that's, more, that's, that's almost enough. He's a God that's more than enough. He's El Shaddai then. He's never changed. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. And he'll always be the God that's more than enough. Always be the God that's more than enough. And then those people, they, they had the audacity to, 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 to just look back and say, well, can God, can God, can God provide a table out here in the wilderness? And said he's kindled his wrath, made him mad as fire. Only thing he got mad as fire about in the whole Bible, kindled his wrath. He said, you think, you think, I'm, you think this challenges me? And, 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 then, and then they started complaining. I love the part when they started complaining for meat. We're tired of this bread. I'd have shut it off. They're glad I wasn't God, you complaining, grumbling bunch. I'm not quite fully mature in love for people, I guess, yet, because I'd have just said, fine, go without it a week. See how you do on your own. In the desert. We'll shut the water off for two days. I bet that'll let you have a change of heart and attitude. But those people, they wouldn't have come back humble. They wouldn't have gone on their knees. They got madder yet. You can read it in your Bible. They, they, they'd have got more angry. They'd have gotten more upset. They'd have shook their fist even harder. No, God said, you want meat? I'll blow quail in on the wind. I'll blow it in till it's up to your knees. I'll blow it in till it's up to your waist. I'll blow it in till it's up to your armpits. I'll blow it in till it's coming out your nostrils. And I'm going to blow it in for 30 days. 30 days straight. Morning doves on the breeze, blowing in till you had to stand like this to breathe. They were so thick in the camp. He said, had enough yet? See, sometimes you just be careful what you complain to God that you don't have. Hallelujah. Halle See? All right, let's go back to our... Come on, quick, quick, quick. We got to go. We got to go. All right, Luke 1, 37, for with God, say it. Nothing. No, 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 no. Come on, say it. With God? Nothing. Louder. Really out loud. Stand to your feet. Come on. Quick, 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 quick. Come on, with God Nothing. shall be impossible. Hallelujah. Nothing shall be impossible. All right, you can be seated. You can be seated, praise God. And then, and then <coughs> the next verse, verse 38. Verse 38, one of the most powerful verses for you in the whole Christmas story. He, the angel says, this is what's going to happen. Here is, here's how it's going to happen. And this is what he said to, to her. He's never said this to you. Personally, I'm quite relieved. <laughs> You know, he's never said the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you and you're going to have a baby. Woohoo! He's never said that. He's never said that to anybody but this young girl named Mary. It's the only person, the only human he's ever spoken that scripture to. But the principle of the scripture of the Holy Spirit coming upon you and the power of the power of the highest overshadowing you, and then coming to pass what he promised would come to pass. And with God, nothing shall be impossible. I don't care if it has never happened before. It doesn't matter if it's never happened in your life before. It doesn't matter if you've prayed about it in the past. It doesn't matter how long it's been till, since you've heard about it manifesting for anybody. None of that matters. What matters is, do you really truly believe that with God nothing is impossible? And are you willing to do the same thing that this young lady did right here? First thing she said is, you... Hey, look, look, look at me! I don't know if she said it like that, but she said, Behold. <laughs> Behold means pay attention here. It means, hey, open your eyes. Get your, get, get your eyes up. Take, get, put that cell phone away for a minute. Hey, 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 hey. You know, he's probably getting, getting more instruction from headquarters. He's going like this. Take that near thing out of there. Listen to me right now. Behold. Behold what? I imagine he got her attention. She said, Ten hut! And he just looked at her and says, Look at me. Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. What's she saying? I'm a servant of God. He wants to do it. He's found a willing vessel. He can do it in me. I want to see the will of God done more than anything else in my entire life. You are looking at a servant of God. Pay attention. Behold the servant of the Lord. That's what she's saying. Handmaiden means a servant. 
a female servant. She is a handmaiden of the Lord. She said, oh, you are looking at, see, she wasn't a preacher. She didn't publish any books. She didn't have 13 tape sets, and, and she had her own television program. She didn't have her own letterhead and her little placard on her office door. I'm a servant of the Lord. No, no. The angel came and stood there and said, this is how I want to use you. This is what I want to do in your life. And she said, you are looking at a servant of God. Be it unto me according as you have said it. Just exactly what you have spoken, let it be to me according to your word. Say, well, yeah, but... Um, it was just the word of an angel. That may be what's holding you back from receiving all of the great things that God wants in your life, that you can't look past the messenger and just take the message. You're too hung up on the wings and the, and the halo, or the lack of wings and lack of halo. And you can't look at the messenger Greek word, angelos, as it appears in this verse, as it appears in Hebrews, chapter 1, as it appears in James, chapter 2, as it appears in Revelation, chapters 1, 2, and 3. In Hebrews, is talking about the winged creatures with the, with the halo, you know, with the, with the brilliant, white, bright. In James chapter 2, it's talking about the messengers that went into Jericho and then came back out. In Revelation chapters 1, 2, and 3, it's talking about the pastors of the seven churches. Same word, messenger. Same word. I wouldn't stand there and say, well, be it unto me according to your word. Well, she would because she knows, she, she knows where that word came from. And she knows that's a servant of God. And she knows he brought the message directly from heaven. And so she's just going to take that word and say, be it unto me according to your word. Go ahead, and, go, ahead and, go ahead and let it be in my life, just like you said. Just like you said. Now, when, 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 when you hear a word like 3 John verse 2, 3 John verse 2 says... We ought to be way ahead of this. You've already got the list. 3 John verse 2 says, all right, we're going to skip 3 John verse 2. We're going to go to 1 John 5. All right, I'll... Third John 2 says, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. 3 John, verse 2 says, I wish above all things that you would prosper and that you would be in health. And all the people of God said, Be it unto me according to your word. And, 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 and 1 Peter 2.24 says, He bore your sins in his own body on the tree so that you could be righteous, and by his stripes you were healed. And all the people of God said, and 2 Corinthians 5.17 says you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And verse 21 says you are now righteous with God. Right with God. He became sin for you who knew no sin so that you could be right with God. And all the people of God said... And Colossians 2.10, Colossians 2.10 says you are complete in Him. I'm waiting... And 2 Timothy 4.18 says, The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and preserve me to his heavenly kingdom. And Romans 5.1 says, You're justified with God. With, you're justified by faith and you have peace with God. And 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, You have the mind of Christ. And Ephesians 1.3 says he's blessed you with all of heaven's blessings. And Philippians 4.19 says that you have all of your needs met according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And 2 Thessalonians 1.3 says that your faith is growing exceedingly and your love for each other abounds. 
And Hebrews 8 and verse 12 says that he will be merciful to your unrighteousness and sins and iniquities. He'll never remember them. <laughs> and 2 Peter 1 and verse 3 says that according as his divine power has given me all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that's called me to glory and virtue. <laughs> Every single time, every single time, every single time I have the Lord say anything to me, it's got to be me standing up. I say, I accept it and receive it for myself and let it be so just as you have spoken. I believe it's your will. I believe it's your plan. And I believe it's mine right now. Mine right now. Now open your Bible to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And verse 45, this is after she gets up to Elizabeth. This is after, she, after she, 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 she makes her journey, after she announces and calls Elizabeth's name, and after Elizabeth says, as soon as your voice sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb, and, and what? In verse 45, and blessed is she that believed. She could have stood there and argued with that angel. You're just going to have to find somebody else. I believe it's the Lord's will. We've been waiting for a Messiah for forever. I believe it's the Lord's plan. My great-grandparents, my grandparents, my parents, all of us, we've been waiting for this to happen. I believe your word. It can happen. I even know my Bible. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. I believe it, I believe it can I just don't know if it's for me. She stood right there and said, it is for me. Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. I'll, I'll do it. You need somebody to do it? I'll do it. You need somebody to accept that promise and be the best? Oh, you're looking at you're, you're looking at. I'm your man. Yep, I'm your woman. You want that verse? I remember, I remember somebody came to me years and years and years ago, and they're here tonight. They may even remember it. They may even remember it came right up to me and said, <clears throat> I don't know anybody that all of this is working for. I don't know one single solitary human being that all of this is working for. I smiled and said, feast your eyes. I didn't even do it in arrogance. It's all working for me, whether it's manifested or not. I'll take every one of those promises. If somebody else reads 1 Peter 2.24 and says, well, that can't be for me. I believe it's the will of God, but I'm not sure if it's for me. It's for me. It's for me. I said, it's for me. Bless me with all of heaven's blessings in heavenly places in Christ. That's for me. That's what she was saying. That's for me. Yeah, I'll be the one. Go ahead and manifest. Go ahead and manifest complete deliverance. Go ahead and manifest the favor of God. Go ahead and manifest boldness. Go ahead and just, just, just manifest every single solitary need met in every realm, every arena, every circumstance, every situation of life. Go ahead and just manifest that for me. Behold the, the servant of God. Behold the, the handmaiden of the Lord. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take the help of God. I'll, I'll, I'll take what part of the Bible is not written to you? What part of the Bible is just written to somebody else but not you? See, everything in the Bible is written to you. Everything in the Bible, every promise, every instruction, every commandment, every, every, every bit of it. That's, that's written to you. Who's the Bible not written to? Who's the Bible not written? It's written to you. It's, it's written to you. You just think God wants everybody healthy, wealthy, and wise. Amen. Exactly right. Every need met to the point where you can help other people. <clears throat> Full of all nine fruits of the Spirit. Gifts of the Spirit and manifestation. Spirit of God ordering your steps and directing your paths. Winning people to Christ. Winning people left and right. An influence in your life, in your, in your business, in your, on your job, in your school, in your community. The most influential person there ought to be you. Ought to be you. Yep, ought to be you. Amen. Finding, finding sick people to raise right up. Bring them to church. Raise them up off their deathbed. Pull them out of their chair. 
Amen. Manif let, let the power of God manifest through you. Lay your hands on them. Cast the devil out of them. God wants to use you. Step back and say, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Oh, I, you, you, can, you can use me. Yes, amen. Praise God. Praise God. I don't have time to teach that, Lord, and you know it. Ephesians chapter, I'm not going to turn there. The third chapter of Ephesians says that God is demonstrating through the church his many faceted wisdom to the principalities and the powers. You know all those angels that followed Lucifer and shouldn't have? And Lucifer is one of those? They're going to school on you. He is demonstrating his manifold wisdom through the church. Not the building. You're the church. And members individually. 1 Corinthians 12. He's demonstrating his many faceted wisdom through the church to the principalities and powers. They have to stand back and watch. I, I, okay, Lord, if you want to demonstrate something today, go for it. Go for it. Now, be careful if you don't want that prayer. Because when Satan came before God, God said, Have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Job? He said, Well, yeah, but, but you protect everything he has. He said, He's in your hand, but you can't take his life. And, and Satan destroyed everything he had in one day. And Satan was sure that he was going to curse God. And he didn't. He came up again and said, have you considered my servant Job? You were wrong about him. Yeah, but skin for skin, flesh for flesh. If you put your hand on his flesh, he'll curse you. He said, you can put your hand on his flesh, but you can't kill him. He suddenly was covered with pussy splitting open bleeding boils from the bottoms of his feet on his backside, on his front side, in his armpits, all the way to the top of his head. And he didn't curse God. Then his wife got involved and said, why don't you curse God and die? He said, I'm not going to curse God. Apparently, Lucifer doesn't know humans as well as he thinks because he thinks we'll all curse God if things get bad enough, if we get angry enough, if we get upset enough, if we lose enough, if we hurt bad enough. And every once in a while, I, I, just, I just have this belief that God never changes. And some, some, some idiotic, stupid accusation by Lucifer, now Satan, gets answered like this. Have you considered my servant, William? Have you considered my servant, Jeremy? Have you considered my servant, Benjamin? Have you considered my servant, Jasmine? Have you considered my servant, Sally, and, 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 and by the church, God is demonstrating his manifold wisdom. Oh, if you want to demonstrate deliverance, Lord, I'm a candidate. If you want to demonstrate healing, I am a candidate. If you want to demonstrate how your servants can be faithful and therefore blessed, I'm a candidate. If, if you, want to, you want to demonstrate the favor of God on a human being, I'm a candidate. I'm a candidate. If you want your will demonstrated in the earth, I'm a candidate. I'm a candidate. But notice in this 45th verse, she had a part to play. Didn't just happen because it was the will of God. She had to step up and say, be it to me according to your word. She had to say, you can do whatever you want. I want to see your will accomplished in my life. She had to say, your will done on earth is in heaven and I'm on the earth. Not just in everybody else. Not just in the whole church in general. Me. Go ahead and do what you want in me. Colossians 4.12, may I stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. And when she went down to Elizabeth's house, verse 45, Elizabeth said, blessed is she, come on, help me, blessed is she, 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 blessed is she. not is believing. Not is going to believe sometimes. Already did. Accepted it. Took it. Said it's for me. It's mine. Blessed is she that believed. Now watch this. There shall be a performance of those things that were promised her by the Lord. 
Blessed is he that believed. There'll be a promise. There'll be a, there'll be a performance of what the Lord promised him. Blessed is she that believed. There will be a performance of what the Lord promised her. Blessed are they that believed. There's going to be a performance of what the Lord promised them. Now take it backwards and do reverse deduction on this verse. If she doesn't believe, there'll be no performance, even though the Lord promised it. Because she didn't believe. Let's close with Romans chapter 4. But she did believe, and there was a performance of exactly what the Lord promised. Exactly what the Lord promised. Romans chapter 4. Are you there? Yes. Neither am I. Romans chapter 4. All right, now I'm there. Romans chapter 4. And, 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 and <clears throat> verse 17 is what God spoke to Abraham. Verse 17, what God spoke to Abraham. As it is written, it was even recorded in the Bible for us, I have made you the father of many nations. Now that sounds like past tense, doesn't it? And when God said that to Abraham, he didn't have a son, didn't have one for 20 more years. That sounds almost like by the stripes I took on my back, I have healed you. And it didn't come to pass because God said it. The next verse says, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. Watch this. According to what was spoken. According to what God had spoken, so shall your seed be. Took him out and said, look at the sky. Look at all the stars. So shall your offspring be. So shall your descendants be. So shall your seed be. Look at the sands of the shores of the sea. So shall your seed be. That many. He didn't even have one son yet. Didn't even have a child. Tried to bring it to pass in his own strength. Nobody's ever done that. Tried to bring it to pass by his, own, by his own intelligence and brought Ishmael into the picture. That, no, God said that, that's not going to come by your strength. It's going to come by my promise. The promise of God comes to pass by faith. Verse 19, being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body, which now was dead. He was 100 years old. Or the deadness of Sarah's womb. She was 90. He didn't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was, this is strong faith right here. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. He was able to perform. Now, we have Sunday morning, and Sunday morning is going to be a, a great service a, a right on the doorstep of the end of the year and the beginning of a new year. But uh, <clears throat> I just couldn't be any more delighted to share any scripture with you than I am right now. In our last midweek service of 2018, he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. See, before it ever happened, before it ever happened, you cannot sit and look at your empty bank account and say, our bank account is empty. You can't look at your twisted body and say, my body's twisted. You, you can't look at, at the fact that you are tormented by something and say, I'm tormented by something. You can't feel weak and, 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 and just say, <clears throat> I sure am weak. Or you're going to stay weak and you'll probably get weaker. I'm so lonely. You're probably going to get lonelier. Because you believe it in your heart and you're saying it out your mouth and it's going to absolutely be solidified in your life. But if you'll do what the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. I am strong. If you'll profess the word of God, what God promises, and just say, I'm never alone, the Father's with me, and he never leaves me and he never forsakes me. He's with me always, even to the end of the age. And I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit and he dwells inside of me. Uh, then, then all that's going to change. And you have to give glory to God. And that, and that means saying thank you that you're inside of me and thank you that I'm a temple of the Spirit of God and thank you that I'm never alone and thank you. And, 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 and he gave glory to God that he was the father of many nations. Changed his name, started calling himself Abraham when he didn't have any children. And the word Abraham means father of many nations. He just spoke what God spoke over him. That's all he did. That's all confession is. You, you can't, you can't, 
You can't confess what somebody else is to be yours. You can't confess you're going to be the next astronaut to Mars or president of the United States and it come to pass. Lamentation says, who shall say anything and it come to pass if God hasn't said it first? Confession is just saying what God said about you. Abraham called himself Abraham because that's what God said about him. You're the father of many nations. And if he says you're the righteousness of God and you're justified in Christ and you have peace with God and the love of God's been shed abroad in your heart and, 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 and he supplies all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus and you're the temple of the Holy Ghost, um, you shouldn't have any problem at all giving glory to God for that. And being fully persuaded that what God has promised, he's able to perform. God is able. We never say, can God? We say, God can. We, we never question, can God do anything? With God, nothing is impossible. And we'll believe it, and we'll accept it for ourselves, and say, be it unto me according to your word. And we shall believe, and therefore, there'll be a performance of those things that have been promised us. God bless you. Let's all stand tonight. Thank you for watching The Word of the Lord, a weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church. Living Word Christian Church welcomes you to join us at 2015 Ward Avenue in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30, and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information on Living Word Christian Church, visit us on the web at lwcclax.com.